Hi everyone, this is Stephanie from the Pasadena Public Library. I'm going to show you how to make a protective sleeve for your tablet, e-reader, or notebook. The finished size of this bag is 8 inches by 10 and a half inches, so it should fit most tablets. To start, let's go over the materials that you'll need. You'll need a fat quarter of exterior fabric such as canvas and a fat quarter of a lighter weight fabric for your lining such as quilting cotton. You'll also need a quarter yard of fusible fleece interfacing, your sewing machine thread, two inches of sew-on velcro, and a zipper that's at least eight inches long. Also basic sewing tools like your pins, fabric scissors, and a fabric marker or some chalk. I've also linked to the free pattern I'm using in the description below. So let's start out by cutting out the exterior fabric. Using the pattern piece labeled front and back, cut two from your exterior fabric. To do this, I have folded my fat quarter in half so I can cut two pieces at once. Make sure to leave enough room above to cut out the two smaller pieces in the next step. So once you've cut out the front and back piece, we're going to unfold that exterior fabric and then place your front pocket and closure pieces and then cut one of each of those pattern pieces. And that's all the exterior fabric cut. So now I'm going to cut out the lining fabric and if you have half a yard it's going to be a little bit easier. If you have a fat quarter you can still fit the pattern pieces but it's going to be a tight squeeze. So here's how to do it. First fold your lining fabric in half. Place the pattern piece labeled front and back near the bottom corner. It's important that you leave at least six and a quarter inches above and about one and three quarters inches along the fold line. And we're gonna use those spaces to cut out other pieces in the next step. So you might wanna measure to make sure you're leaving enough space. You're going to cut two of the front and back from your lining fabric. Then unfold the lining fabric and refold the edges of both sides toward the center. You should now have two folded edges. Place the pattern piece labeled zipper pocket along one folded edge. Cut one piece along the fold, then replace the zipper pocket piece along the other folded edge and cut again. Place the pattern piece labeled closure along the narrow strip at the bottom and cut one. You'll also want to use that front and back piece to cut two pieces of fusible fleece interfacing. And it's a good idea to trim this down so that it doesn't extend too far into the seam allowance. So you can see on the pattern where this dash line is. So I just cut this fleece to fit that line there. Now, once I have cut everything out, I'm going to transfer over some of these markings. So I want to mark onto the right side of the exterior fabric where I'm going to place that zipper. I'm also going to put this mark on the wrong side of my zipper pocket here where I'm going to place the zipper. The first thing I'm going to sew is the hook and loop fastener. So take your closure lining piece and the fuzzy velcro piece and pin that onto the closure piece about 5 eighths of an inch away from the bottom centered on that piece. Then you're going to stitch that loop fastener all the way around in a big rectangle. Take your two closure pieces over to your ironing board and you're going to press over 
the side edges and the bottom edge by 3 8 of an inch, which is one centimeter. You're gonna do that on the exterior piece as well as the lining piece, which you have just attached the Velcro to. Now place the two closure pieces wrong sides together and pin them together and we'll stitch all the way down the sides and bottom edge, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Now take the back exterior panel and place that tab so that it is lining facing up and center it at the top of that panel. Go ahead and pin it and baste it in place at about a quarter of an inch away from the top edge. Now take your matching Velcro piece and place it where indicated on your pattern on the front exterior panel. It's about one and three eighths of an inch down from the top and centered in the middle of the bag, just like this. Now we're going to stitch this in place just like we did with the other Velcro piece. Now take your zipper pocket that you drew the zipper onto and place it right sides together onto the front panel of your exterior fabric where you also drew the zipper. And you're going to line up those zipper markings, pin it in place, then stitch a rectangle where you marked in chalk. Then cut out the inside as indicated on your zipper pocket pattern. So you're cutting a line down the center of that rectangle, then clipping into those corners, but being careful not to cut actually into where you stitched. Then insert the fabric through that hole so that it is on the other side of your exterior panel. Press the seam and make sure that you don't see much of your lining from the outside of the bag. Now take your zipper and place it under that rectangular hole that we just created. It's okay if you have a longer zipper as we can easily trim it down later. Just make sure that your zipper pull is somewhere inside of the rectangular opening. Then pin the zipper in place. As I'm stitching around this zipper, I start on one side that doesn't have the zipper pull, and when I get close to where that zipper pull is, I'm going to stop with my needle down and lift up my presser foot and carefully pull that zipper pull underneath and out of the way. And when I get past it, I'm going to pull it back to the end and then stitch all the way back to where I started. It can be a little bit tricky to pull the zipper pull out of the way but if you just take a minute and work it under that presser foot, it'll be a lot easier to stitch around that area. Now flip over that panel and take your other zipper pocket piece and pin it to the other zipper pocket piece that you have already attached. So your two zipper pocket pieces should be right sides together. So you're only pinning the lining pieces to each other. You're not pinning to the exterior of the bag. Then you're going to stitch at 3 8 of an inch all the way around that rectangle. Now to create our little patch pocket, you're going to fold and press both side seams at half an inch 
then fold up the bottom edge at half an inch. Then you're going to fold over the top seam at three quarters of an inch and press. Then fold it again at three quarters of an inch and press. Then you're gonna top stitch that top fold in place at about an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge. Back stitching on both ends. Place that pocket onto the front piece where indicated on the pattern, then pin and top stitch the pocket an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Then you're going to top stitch again three eighths of an inch away from the edge so you have, so you have two rows of stitching here. So sorry I didn't get footage of actually stitching this on, but it was pretty simple. I just stitched right along the pocket along the bottom along these sides and the bottom of the pocket pivoting around the corner and back stitching at both sides and then I did another row of stitches um, at about uh, three-eighths of an inch maybe a little closer to a quarter of an inch now we're going to be assembling the exterior of the back so place your two exterior panels right sides together and Line them up along the side seams and the bottom seams. Then stitch together at 3 8 of an inch down the sides and the bottom seam. At this point, you're going to leave the top edge unstitched. Remember to backstitch at the ends and pivot around those corners. Then just clip off your bottom corners. Be careful not to actually cut through your stitching. Now I'm just using my fusible fleece interfacing to the wrong side of both of my large lining pieces and I am trimming down my interfacing a little bit because sometimes it can grow a little bit after you cut it. It can stretch out. I want it to be about 3 8 of an inch smaller on all sides so that it doesn't create too much bulk in my seam allowance. Then I'm just fusing it from the right side of my lining fabric. Mark on the bottom of one lining panel of an area that's about four inches wide. That's going to be left unstitched. Then go ahead and pin your two lining pieces together, right sides together, Stitch all the way down the sides and the bottom, leaving that four inch area unstitched. Clip your bottom corners, then press open the seam allowances on the sides and bottoms of your lining piece as well as your exterior piece. Then take your exterior piece and turn it right side out. Then place it inside your lining panel so that they are right sides together and carefully line up the side seams. Then you're going to pin all the way around the top. Make sure that that closure tab is tucked in between the lining and the exterior so you shouldn't be able to see it. Remove my accessory table so I can use the free arm of the sewing machine. And then I'm going to stitch all the way around the top of the bag in a big circle at 3 8 of an inch. Turn the bag right side out through the hole in the bottom of the lining. Then try to push out the bottom corners as much as you can using a chopstick or a knitting needle. 
Then you're just going to stitch the hole in the lining closed. So I'm just going to stitch all the way across that bottom hole close to the edge. Now push the lining inside the bag and place the bag over the end of your ironing board and we're just going to press that top edge all the way around. Now you just want to top stitch near the edge of the top of the bag. So I'm going to go all the way around this bag at about an eighth of an inch away from the top. Then just give your project one final press to get it nice and crisp and you're done. So I hope you give this project a try. If you are feeling like it's a little too complicated, you can always leave off the pockets, the zipper pocket or the patch pocket, and it'll be a much quicker project. But I do really like having that little accessory pocket to keep my charger in or to keep a pen in for your notebook. Thanks for watching and happy sewing!